Okay, so y'all are all familiar with this one, right? So the exponential function y equals e to the x is a one-to-one -one function. Uh, it's got domain everything. So in other words, you can plug in any x coordinate here, so that's when you're good to go. And it's got range, the non-zero positive values, right? Well, please. So what you all remember what the significance of the one-to-one -one function was? So one to one minute past the horizontal line points. Y'all does that ring a bell? Horizontal line can only hit one point. That means when you flip that over the line y equals x, it passes the vertical line points. You reflect this about y equals x. Does anybody know what this one is? Good. This is the inverse. So what it does is it translates into point. For example, this is point zero one, and this is point two zero. Uh, let's recall some properties. One P A. Anybody know what this one is? E to the A times E to the B. Uh, plus. And two. And from this also, it follows that e to the zero is one. And you can see this in the graph because if you plug in x equals zero, e to the zero is one. And this is the natural logarithm in that place, but general logs are the same. A. So, need to be applied in some of the law too. Notice that these are inverse functions. The domain of the exponential, plug anything into it, but its output can only be positive. That's sort of role with this log. You can only plug in positive things to log, but its output can be anything. Okay. Is this all familiar uh, to y'all? And remember, this is actually one of the biggest, and this is why the log is actually useful. Uh, so here's some other relationships between them. E of the natural log of x is equal to. So, in other words, what happens if you start with x, take its log, and then take the exponential of it? Well, that's the whole point of inverse functions. It's like the inverse here. If you take the log of something and you instantiate it in x, here x is too big for zero, which would be up to be log. What happens if you take a number? Take the exponential and then take the log. You also get times x. And here any x will be. Doesn't have to be positive. Um, so y is equal to natural log to x. 
if and only if, e to the y is equal to x. So in other words, an inverse function in general, the logarithm in particular, is the inverse gear of the x function. y of log x is if and only if x is y. Um, and finally, uh, If A is some number bigger than zero, um, then if you look at A to the X, so you look at a more general exponential, either this is P2 to the X. This is, this is kind of a neat thing to prove. E the natural log A to the X. Right? Because Bill is the same thing as E to the log of them. But of course, A to the X is always a positive. Everybody okay with that? And what can I do with this X? Well, by this property here, that X, I can slide it down in the front. So there's an important observation here. Let's see if this yeah, A to the X is equal to so what does this mean? Why do I care? Um, how many of you have calculated somewhere in your life? Uh, how many of you have an easy expert in your calculator? So you can put in a number. How many of you have a calculator that has a two to the Probably don't. Uh, how many of you have a pi to the x button or a square root of two to the x button? You probably don't. Why? Because you don't need it. If you want 2 to the x, you can do this in terms of the exponential. How do you figure out 2 to the 10th power? Well, just take 10 times the natural log of 2 and take e to that power. So the, what this equation shows you is the e to the x button is the only button you need on your calculator if you want to go pinches, right? But they're all in terms of that. There's a similar thing for the natural log. So you, you all have probably seen this function. I, I, I don't know if they dealt with that much, but y is natural law of base x if and only if x equals a to y. So just like the natural law of Natural log of x is log base e x. <coughs> so it turns out, as a matter of fact, that any logarithm base a, you can put that in terms of the natural log. That's kind of a So suppose suppose the y is log base a of x, and a can be uh, uh, here. Let me be clear. I want a to be bigger than zero, and a not to be one. One is a very silly case. This is the same thing as saying that a to the y is equal to x. Right. Now let's take the natural log of both sides, the natural. Oh, yeah. Here, here's the natural log of both sides. 
what can I do with this lie here? I can move it to the front. So, if I solve for y now, this is why you don't have a log base 2 button on your calculator. Because log base A of X, how would your calculator do this if you want to take the log base 2 of 10? Well, what your calculator does, it takes the log base 10, the natural log base, uh, the natural log of 10, and divides by the natural log. So in other words, here's the moral to the story. This is why I'll probably ask you a couple of questions about the natural log and a to the x, but I will ignore them mostly, not completely, because they're all the same, right? a to the x is basically e to the x time, uh, to a certain power. And the natural log uh, base a of x is the natural, or I'm sorry, the log base a of x is the natural log of x. So they're all basically just translates to the same idea of natural log. Okay, so you must think that I've completely had a stroke up here. I'm talking about this algebra stuff. What's it got to do with? Well, just remember that the exponentials and the logs are inverse of each other. And this gives us some power here. First, I want to, I, I want to derive the derivative of the log. We talked about this yesterday. Notice the derivative of the power of x, the derivative of x to the n power is n x to the n minus 1, right? And as we pointed out last night, the only power that's not achievable by taking the derivative of the power of x is the minus 1 power. The log, it turns out, fills in this hole. So, this builds on what we were doing yesterday. This is this differentiation. This is why it's important. I want to find my problem. That's kind of my big question, but I want to find it. what's the derivative of that. Well, I don't know anything, right? Because you can't just take the derivative because I don't know anything. But here's what I do now. Why is it? Now, I can take the derivative of this implicitly because I may not know what the derivative of natural log of x is, but I do know what the derivative of e, e, e the log is, right? So let's take the derivative of this equation implicitly. What's the derivative of, let me start with the e side. What's the derivative of x? What? No, no sweat there. What's the derivative of e to the log? Am I done yet? There you go. And remember, y prime is what I seek. So here we go. What a really why. Now, I'm a little bit unsatisfied with that because I'd really like to have y prime in terms of x, and I don't have it in terms of x, I've got it in terms of y. But what can save me here is this. E to the y, the same in the denominator, is the same thing as x. So here's kind of the big takeaway. Derivative the natural log of x is one over x. I'm going to take this a bit a, a step further. Let me ask you a question here. 
what's the domain of the natural log of x? That is, what values of x cannot plug in? Then it Any positive number, right? Zero's out of bounds, right? And negative, you can't take the log of the negative number. What about this function? What can I plug in here and it makes sense? Anything other than zero, right? This is a little disappointing because the natural law only works for positive values and it's worked for everything. So. Let me up the voltage on this. This is kind of a neat little chain of exercise. Let's see the function the absolute value of x. Does anybody, I mean, you all have seen pictures of this, right? Looks like a V. Does anybody know how this function is defined? So let me ask you this. What's the absolute value of seven? What's the absolute value of negative 10? So the absolute value of negative two. Oh my goodness, you look so bad. How do you do When I give you a number, what do you do? You, you make it positive. So here's what you do. You listen to me. And if you hear me say a positive number or zero, you just repeat the number I said. If I say seven, you say seven. If I say zero, you say zero. If I say 10, you say 10. What happens if you hear me say a negative number? Negative two, negative four. You make it positive. Let me put that in, in kind of a form of the thing. You listen to the number, you hear it's negative, and you multiply it by negative one, and that makes it positive. How many of you have seen this definition for the absolute value? And of course, we the fish. <laughs> this formula says absolute value of x is y equals x if x is greater than or equal to zero. And that's exactly what we have to do, y equals x. And if x is less than zero, it's y equals negative x. It's no question. Okay, so let's do this. Let's figure out what the derivative of the natural log, the absolute value of x is. <clears throat> Notice the absolute natural log of the absolute value of x. What's the domain of this one? What what values of x can I plug in now? Anything, right? Because that that absolute value changes all negatives to positives. So my only problem I'm going to have here is for x to zero. Well. Let's do this. Case one, x is bigger than, well, x is bigger than zero. The ddx, natural log of absolute value of x, if x is bigger than zero, then absolute value of x is equal to x. We're under the first rule, right? And what's the derivative of the natural log of x? 1 over x. In case 2, let's suppose x is less than 0. Then the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x is the natural log. What's the absolute value of x if x is negative? Our rule says it's negative. What's the derivative of natural log of blob? One over blob. And my blob in this case is negative x. Am I done? The chain rule says I got to multiply by the derivative of what I find inside. Parentheses. What is the derivative of negative x? Negative one. The negatives cancel. And I also 
get one over X. So this is an important piece right here. We can take this a step further and know that star B the X of the natural log of the absolute value of X is one of X. So if I do something a little bit more general with the chain rule. Derivative of natural log of the absolute value blob, one over blob, times the derivative. Now, Uh, this is another reason why the exponential e to the x and the natural law really kind of cover everything. So here's This is like remember that log log base A of X is natural log of X over natural log of A. Now don't let this intimidate you, right? This is equal to, let me write this more dramatically. One of the natural log of X. That's natural log of X. That's. You might be tempted to look at this and say, hey, do a quotient rule, but that's totally overkill. Because one over log A, remember, A is a number, so log A is a number. So this is no different than a two or a three or something multiplying this. This is one over natural log of A, and the derivative of natural log of the absolute value of X is one of X. So the derivative of log base A, the absolute value of X, is one over X times the natural log of A. By the way, you might ask yourself, what happens if A equals E, if this is the natural log? But if A equals E, that natural log, natural log of E is 1. And so this formula gets back to what I'm familiar with. That's right. When I took the derivative of this, this is basically think of this like a 2. It's just a number. It goes along for the ride. And the derivative of natural log absolute value of x is one of x. And if I take the derivative of Well, let's go through this. What is A to the X? Well, A to the X, the X log of Well, 
Okay, so now I'm going to do something very fast. Oh, I love this one because it's an even block. For every even block, it's a block. But am I done? What's the derivative of x, y, j? Okay. Well, okay. Let me ask you a question. What's the derivative of 2x? Well, it's the derivative of 3x. Well, what's the derivative of 3x? Well, what's the derivative of log a times x? Log a. Because this is just a number. This is a number times x. And notice another name for this is this thing right here is a and x. But again, a and x is this. So the common way this form is written is a and x. It's a natural law. So the derivative of a to the x power is a to the x power log a is e just power. Notice if a is equal to e, if a is equal to e, this formula gives you e to the x times natural log of e, which is one. So you get the derivative of e to the x. So natural log of a is That is correct, because a is a fixed number. So natural log a is just the number you would get if you took whatever a is, two, seven, whatever. Put in your calculator and put the answer up, whatever that is. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Now, uh, so good for us. We're very proud. Summarize this. Sure. I'd like to practice what I think. Um, that goes like this. I'm about to do this right now. Oh, okay. Well, actually, you know what? Let me come back to the question. And we'll do we'll do we'll do that Um uh, so here's kind of a summary of what we're at here. This would follow the basis of generalization, yes, and four. <clears throat> That's what we've accomplished so far. Let me, show, let, me, let me show you something new, and this will show you why some people might care about the logarithm. Uh, you know that. So if you have a constant base, here, as opposed to assuming a is bigger than zero, one, all of this formula, this particular formula does that when a is one. If you have a constant base and a variable exponent, there is what the derivative is. You've got it. So we've totally got this list constant base, variable exponent, there's a the formula for the derivative. This was an old one. What's this? What happens when you have uh, a variable base and constant x? Okay, 
it simply. Actually, let's go to Hebrews. I'll go, I'll, I'll have to be right. This is an old one. Remember that road of XDN and NXDN minus one. In 1040, they might have showed you why this is true, uh, and they might have shown you for positive values, uh, like things like one, two, three, four, oh, look, this works. There's various ways to do this. And then they might have done some special cases like one half, or even X is one half, is one half X is minus one half, so, so on. What they couldn't have shown, or at least not carefully, is does this work for something like R is the square root of two? Ah, so that, this is a lot. Of, this is a, a a problem with logs now. Okay, so let's Justify this. Take you off. Now, what's one of the big things about log? What we're going to be doing is R. of R log X is what? R times root of log X, which is one of rest. Great. Sure. The derivative of log Y is one over Y times what? Good. So we've chain ruled that separate group. So y prime, if I were to solve this, is r y times one over x. If I were to slide that y over there. Well, what is y? It's x to the r. So you have x to the r, and you have x to the minus one. This is r, x, r minus. Um, there's the justification at that point. So now we have the power rule for every power, as long as R, R can be anything, it can be irrational, all kinds of things. Everybody okay with that, sir? So let me recap again. Constant base, variable exponent, there's your formula. Variable base, constant exponent. Let me throw you all a monkey wrench that you might not be seeing. Anybody get any guess what Black Connors did? This was just a little bit weird. Here, first of all, you need to define this for x bigger than zero. And if you think the exponential grows fast, oh my goodness, right? Because when you plug in one to this function, you get one to the one, which is you plug in two, you get two to the two, which is two. But even over all of the ten, if you plug in ten to this, you get ten to the ten, which is already like you get ten to the this goes very, very fast. What's this derivative? They don't apply. Neither one of them. What I have here is a situation where both the base and the exponent are varying. Right? My rules don't take care of it. So how do we deal with it? Right. I mean, you could go back to the definition of the derivative with the f of x plus h, but I think nobody wants to do that because it's death on a hot plate, sure. But the 
love of totally sorts this out. Take this equation and take the log of Now, what can I do with this sign? Move that to the top. Slot that x down. And that's the key to this because I don't know how to take the derivative of variable base, variable x, right? But when I slide this down, That I can take a derivative. Now, let's let's give this a shot. Dx. What's the derivative of log blob? One over blob times derivative. What's inside? Good. So what am I to do here? Right. Uh, so in general, what, what do you have to invoke to the great The product. The product. Right. So uh, let's take turns to take the derivatives in order. So the derivative of x is one times this log x, and then the other piece is x times one over x, which turns out to be one. So I get one over y, y prime, is equal to log x, which is one. Agree? Okay, so exactly. We what is why? It's the original point. So You know what? I bet you probably wouldn't have guessed that, would you? Right? With the derivative of x dx is x dx times the math logarithm. It seems a little bit out of the blue. The logarithm is This technique is called logarithmic differentiation. Uh, the idea is when you have variable a is variable exponent, this is something that we can't do, but the log helps us bring that variable exponent down and get this into a form that we can, we can actually work. So Richard, tell me what your problem is, the one that you were looking at. Oh, it was okay. All right. All right. So how about this? Thing? Let's write it here. Fx is, let's say, um, I don't know about you guys, but I've always wanted to make the derivative of this. So, this one is a bit of a mess. Um, we have a variable base, variable exponent, but they're inside the parentheses. I suggest almost any complicated derivative I want to add, you know what? Don't try to shove the whole sandwich in your mouth. Take it 
five and ten. I can do the first step of this problem because in the first step of the problem, this is obviously going to be a chain rule. What's the first thing that comes? In? Tangent of law. So let me do this. What is the derivative of tangent of law? Secant square of law. Comes the derivative of what's inside. Everybody agree with that? What's the derivative of x to the sine x? Do you know what? I'd like to move the smaller. Yeah, let me write down something that is incompletely correct and it helps you. Here's what the answer is secant square root of blob comes the derivative of what's inside. So it should be e to the x of x to the sine x plus e to the x sine x to the x. Have I agree with that? Everybody see what I did? I just wrote down the next step of the chain. This answer is correct. It was correct. It is just incomplete because I really would like to write it. Everybody okay with that? I will literally do this. I was taking an answer. I would write that that way. <laughs> and then I come over here and I would say, Because this is what I need to finish the problem. What I need to finish the problem and get all my credit is the derivative of this and the derivative of this. And I will literally do these separate problems and shove it back. Okay. How do I? How do I do this? Richard, I think you said this. The way we tackle this is we need a log because my clue is variable base, variable base. Right. So, Natural log y is equal to uh, natural log x to the sine x, which is sine x log x. Now, let's dx this, make a derivative at 1 over y, y prime is equal to the derivative of this. And this, my friends, is a product rule. Right? So it should be cosine x log x plus sine x over x. So I get y prime is y times this mess things right here. And let's see, what was y? It was x sine x and I'll write out this. Cosine x log x plus sine x over x. A side two uh, so y equal sine x dx and find y find the n. Take the log of this and uh, go back in here. Log y, log 
sin x dx, which is x or sin x. Take derivative again. Right, one over y, y prime is equal to, once again, the product here, uh, one times log sine x plus x times the derivative of log sine x. Derivative of log of log is one over log. And derivative of sine x is what? So y prime is y times this mess, which is sine x to the x log sine x plus x. Because I don't sign this code thing. That's the same thing with the right. Final answer. By the way, I'll give you another piece of advice. If I was taking the exam, just make it clear, I would say, here's the answer. And then I would say, I would draw a little arrow or something and say, this piece is that blue one, and this piece is the red one. I clean it up, got time. You know, don't spend a lot of time polishing stuff in here. All right. So let, I'll do a right down the full form here. It's a secant square. Uh, x sine x plus sine x the x times the derivative of x to the sine x power, which we got to be x the sine x times cosine x log x plus sine x over x plus the derivative of sine x to the x, the red part, sine x to the x uh, log sine x plus x continues. <clears throat> Any questions? Is that clear? Do y'all struggle in? Do y'all understand how to talk? Okay. Question. Yes. This piece is Y, which is this. But, so, okay. You can make these arbitrarily obnoxious. Um, let's, let's, let's do another one.
Yeah, so this one, the SCX is probably so fast. The value of this is one is one. At two, it's two, two to two, plus two to four, which is 16. By the time it gets four, yeah, by the time it gets to four, the number four to four to four is larger than the number of subatomic particles. So this is the gross rate. Uh, what's the derivative? Okay, again, uh, the x, the x, the x is going to be a problem we'll have to deal with later. The first thing I come to just in my travels is sample, whatever sample of is. Now, what I'm doing here, I want to get you some points. The both by my derivative of what's inside. This answer here is correct, but so our burden now is to find the derivative of x dx dx. So side here y is equal to x. Yes, two yes, um, five prime. Okay, what do we have? We have a variable base with a variable exponent, and the exponent is also a variable. This sounds like a job for you. Now, please be careful here. Uh, my next move always seems to be moving that text point. Uh, what should I, what should I move that? What should I do? What's that? Good, 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 good. You're exactly right. The exponent of the x, the x, the x. Okay. So now I totally strip that exponent down a little bit, made it a little bit better. But Somebody tell me what's different now. What's a, what's a problem for us? That's exactly right. In the, in the previous problems I've done, once I did this step here with something like x log x or x log sine x or something, but I've still got this problem. How can I solve this? It's log. I'm going to do something that probably is a little bit more sometimes taking, and, and I'll say right here that your idea of taking the log again for this particular problem is quite the quickest. However, I'm going to do something here that's a little bit more uh, works effectively in the particular situation. So let's go ahead and take the derivative. That's derivative. Log y, one over y, y prime. Okay, so far. Now, of course, the problem I have to do with the derivative here is I'm going to go to this situation, but I will be undaunted. dx is and. Two product here. Now, the one piece that I have next to me is this right here. So, um, Again, this answer is correct. It's in the way. Everybody with us?
this is x x x that that make sense? Okay. So let's go, let's kind of go along and fix my answer. This is now cosine of x to the x to the x times this thing, which we found out is y, which is this is, I'll take x. So this is x to the x to the x uh, times dx x to the x log x x. So now I've got a better answer that is a little bit incomplete. This is completely right. Right. Uh, the only thing missing is this. Now I'm going to draw this again. We did do this problem earlier. So let's do another side. A side two. Z equal x to the x prime z prime. Because that's the only piece I've got missing. So Take the x again, one over z. Z prime is the derivative of this in its product rule. So I get log x plus x in the lower direction, which is one. Make z prime z log x plus one, which is x to the x log x. That's the last little bit of thing. So, so my final answer to you is cosine x to the x to the x times x to the x to the x, this derivative I've done over here, which is uh, x to the x. Uh, log x is one. Log x plus uh, let's see. Cosine x x x got that x the x the x times. Um, what is this? Uh, this is x, x, that's log x plus one, log x, so x plus one. Okay, any questions? Okay. I will draw. I'm going to show you one more thing about this, but I want you all to try this part. Let's see what it is.
Final problem. Thank you, Mr. So deal with this, take the natural log, both sides. First step, everybody okay with it. Now the whole velocity, this allows me to compare what's on flush it out the front. Like that. Now, this XDX would be a problem, but uh, let's just kind of plow ahead. Let's BDX this, and I get 1 over Y, Y prime. And now I've got a product. Okay. First part of the product rule I come to, so it's the tangent thing you block. What's true of the tangent law? Times the derivative of what's inside. Right? And then the other one was long before that. Right? Okay. Now it's the second one to get us through. In this situation, what we have is say so the derivative log this next derivative log of y one over good. But I'm not done then. You have to multiply by the derivative of cosine which is. So I get y prime is equal to y times this mass. And what is my mass? It's secant squared x to the x, derivative of x to the x, times log cosine x, plus, well, I guess it's going to be a minus. So put minus there. Tangent x to the x is tangent. Okay. Now, this answer is correct, but incomplete, because I've still got this thing that I haven't figured out as correctly. But I'm going to be lazy since so we've done this a couple of times. And I'm going to deal with that. And I'm going to put in my Y. Which is that. So, my final answer, I get it. Y prime is Y, which is cosine X, tangent X to the X power. Um, I get secret squared X to the X. Times the derivative of X to the X, which is X to the X, log X plus 1. Times log cosine x minus tangent x to the x and minus.
these are these these problems can be kind of evolved because of having to use a lot of doing steps, but I really think that if you break it down into small pieces, don't worry about you know, you're used to doing things in one step. Derivative of sine of x squared is cosine of x squared is two x. Resign yourself to being able to break it down in pieces, small pieces should. Let me show you another application. Get an application. Keep those problems in mind. One of them we're going to do. I'm going to. I'm going to basically give you a big piece of what we're going to do tomorrow. Because I'm going to go. I'm going to actually cover probably. Tomorrow's section fairly quickly and get into the lady breaks, which is the last thing we're going to have before uh, first exam. So that'll get some uh, work on that. Uh, this function is actually quite important the inverse tangent of x. It's what you get when you take the tangent function and you flip around line by less. Inverse tangent comes up with a lot of applications. Now, you all seem pretty good at your trig stuff. The derivative of tangent secret squared, you all told me that from the equation, so you know the sign plus, even though it was the derivative of the tangent. Now, remember, this is the inverse function. This is, don't confuse this with cotangent. This is not one over tangent, this is the inverse function. One over the derivative. Yep, yep. And I'm gonna this is again the power of logarithmic differentiation. Okay, plus it. This is what it means function of y equals a to the tangent of x. It's a reverse pair of tangent if and only a tangent of y equals x. Yes, okay. Take root this. Yes. Derivative of x is one. Derivative of tangent is secant squared, right? That's good with that. Secant squared y times what? So y prime one over secant squared y. And once again, I'm very disappointed. This one might be a little bit less familiar, but it's equivalent to one degree. Black one is no seven. What's that? Oh, <coughs> Divide both sides of this by cosine squared. So I get sine squared x over cosine squared x plus one is secant squared x. So I just have one of the cosine squared is secant squared x. So this is the answer. So, so in particular, see the square five and four. And how does that go? What's another name to the square five? T 
tangent applies at x, the p squared y is x squared. So the other shot is this. We're going to talk about this a little bit more tomorrow. By the way, notice this is always positive, but it is one because it's fractional to the positive. Look at the graph of the inverse tangent. Think about the tangent lines, aren't they always positive slope? Notice that this seems to be flat here and flat here. It's as steep as possible right there. What is the derivative when x equals zero? One over the biggest you get. The larger value of that is the surface of the spot. So this kind of makes sense. See if you can figure this out. It's a similar thing to what we did before. See if you can use um, implicit differentiation uh, to figure that out. Okay, when you have variable base, variable x, either it's your full problem or your problem, your hands are kind of tied. You're going to have to invoke the law. Now, let me give you an example of where you don't have to invoke the law. Uh, I'll give you all five minutes to start in the race room. Tell me why this is, this problem is totally not. What, what, I mean, think about doing this. So suppose it was on a test. Why would this make you call your business? What, what is there's, there's a lot going on, right? I mean, what's the first thing that pops in there? Right, right. Product rule. It's a, <laughs> so let's suppose you do the quotient rule, right? Square the bottom, easy enough, right? But then what do you got to do? Bottom comes a variable the top. Well, the top is a product of four things. So you're going to have all those terms. And each of those things is changing, right? And then minus top times square the bottom, you get the same thing. Do you have to, can you just go ahead and do the problem? You bet you can, right? But you certainly don't want to. Let me change this a little bit. I'm going to put this to the one half power. It's going to make my life a little bit easier. But I'll give you one step of square root. This is a good situation to take you a lot of it. You don't have to do it, but I highly recommend it. I'm going to do this fast to sort of show you why it's fast. 
I'm going to talk about the steps. We'll do the steps back to the information I explained. Remember the properties I had of this. Log AB, log A plus log B, log A over B, log A minus log B, and log A to R is R log. Let's take the log. But I mean, usually you think log, well, yeah, right? But log is going to make this. This is three log x plus one plus seventeen log two x plus five plus fourteen log x squared plus x plus one half log x cubed plus seven. Minus three log some x minus two log x uh, minus uh, x four log d uh, minus five halves log five x squared just like that. Basically, this is a product, right? So the log turns this into log this, log this, log this, log this. These are in the denominator. So it's minus log this, minus log this, minus log this, minus log this. For a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The minus is signified at the top. The plus is signified at the top. And what else did I do in the step? I moved the power out, right? There's a three here. I slid that out in front. There's a 17. Slid that out in front. 14 out in front. One half out in front. Three out in front with the negative. Two out in front with the negative. X4 log E. By the way, there's a simple name for X4 log E. That's right, log E is one. And then, everybody okay with it? Everybody understand what I did? I took the derivative, just like we've done with those other examples. One over y, y prime. Right? Now, even though there's eight terms on the other side, it's now easy to take the derivative, or at least much easier. This is 3, 1 over x plus 1, plus 17, 1 over 2x plus 5 times 2. Where did the 2 come from? That's right. So 17 is along for the ride, 1 over blah times derivative of blah, derivative of 2x plus 5. Plus 14, 1 over x squared plus x times what? x plus Okay, so far. Fourth term. One half. One over x cubed plus one. Times what? Three x squared. Minus three. One over sine x times. Minus two, one over ten times square. Good. 
Uh, oh, well, I like this piece. It says four, so it's not a four x cube. Uh, minus five halves one over five x squared plus one times So I did this one almost there. Y prime is Y times mass. Bring this over here. Where mass is this huge thing here. My Y is going to take me longer to rewrite this problem than actually figure it out. X plus one cube, two X plus five, 17. X squared plus X, 14. X cubed plus one, one half over sine cube x tangent squared x e to the x four uh five x squared plus one five halves times the mess up that which I will simplify to the problem in the I get three over x plus one plus 34 of uh, 2x plus 5 plus, uh, I guess it'd be 28x plus 14 over x squared plus x. Uh, this would be 3 halves x squared of x cubed plus 1. Minus three cotangent x. Um, I'll see what that is. Minus two secant squared x of tangent x. Uh, minus four x cubed. Minus uh, 25 x over five x squared. Now, again, a challenging problem, but you may think this took a long time. Uh, but it, I mean, just take a couple of steps and try to do this with the chain rule and see what happens. There are two things about this. Number one, this is faster. And in fact, ironically, the more complicated and slower that this one is, the, bigger, the, the faster this is going to be compared to it. And number two, in my personal opinion, this also greatly lowers the chances of a mistake. Because when you take chain rules and product rules, it's very easy to put parentheses in the wrong place or just multiply something very easy to make a mistake. When you write that product as sums and differences, it's much easier. Okay, any questions? <laughs> Any questions on it? Okay. Well, let's let's take a quiz for today. Um and I'll get that up here. There's a